Hi, this is Mike Erickson, and I'm here at Wheatstone with a brand new FM55 straight out of the box, just like you may have. How do we get this audio processor from out of the box to on the air? That's what we're going to discuss here today. This is the FM55 CD that comes with your audio processor. The FM25 also has a similar CD, as well as our other Wheatstone processing products. This CD holds the GUI and instruction manual, and we'll go over how to quickly install and get the FM55 up and running. First thing we're going to do is install the CD onto your computer. If you have a computer that does not have a CD drive, the software is downloadable from our website at wheatstoneprocessing.com. Once we've installed the CD, we'll look for the executable file for the GUI. Here's the Wheatstone GUI on my CD-ROM drive. And this is the software file which we will install right now. Double-clicking on it will bring up a splash window that says Wheatstone. followed by some simple instructions. You want to accept the terms, and you want to choose what products you want to install. Normally, you would want to install everything, the front panel updates, the processor updates, and the 55 GUI. This is so any updates in the future will be accessible by the GUI easily. So you want to update and install these features. Next, it's going to ask you for a destination folder, and the normal destination folder is Program Files Wheatstone FM55. And unless you're installing it in a special configuration, this should be fine. As you can see, setup takes merely a few seconds and we're, and we're done. Now we go find the FM55 Pro and we have a GUI. Now the GUI has no device. Right now my GUI does have a device uh, installed, but your GUI will not. There will be some question marks here under device. So what we want to do is go over to this devices menu here and we want to add a new device. So we're going to call it WCDY just for giggles. And we're going to put in the default IP address on the FM55 which is 155. So our IP address is 192.168.1.155. So once we have that, we now have WCDY in the device menu, and we click and we're now online. So the processor is online. We see pilot level indication here. We see a preset that has been created, usually the default preset, and we have full control over the parameters of the audio processor. That's the simple and easy way. Now, of course, not everyone is using the default IP address. Some people need to use a different IP address. So what we're going to do next is show you how to change the IP address on the FM55 so that it's on your network. On the front panel is where you change the IP address on both the FM25 and the FM55. Turning the knob will reveal a menu of the front panel. And you're going to want to scroll down until you get to the network settings. And once you've reached the network settings, you can press in the round encoder. Here's the IP address. The default IP address is 192.168.1.155. So we're going to change that IP address to 10.1.10.200, just for an example. So what you do is you push the button in when you get to IP address. We'll back out of it again. If you see IP address is highlighted, you push the button in, and you turn the encoder to the number you want. In this case, we're doing 10.1. We'll go this way since it's quicker to 1. 10.1.10. Dot I forgot what I said. 200. 10.1.10.200. If you need to change a subnet mask, same applies. If you need to back out of a setting, just hit the back button right here. And our gateway will be 10, 10.1.10.1. .1 .1. 
Now once this is done, all you need to do is hit the back button and it's saved. And if we go back into the network settings, there's our new network settings, 10.1.10.200. Now if you're connecting directly to the FM55, you're going to have to change your TCP IP settings so that they're within the same range as the audio processor. But more than likely, if you're changing the IP address, you're going to be plugging it into a switch anyway on a network that's already pre-configured. So that should be fine. Now that we've got the network addresses set, we can change the input settings as to what you need for your system. Once again, on the front panel, you'll see the Wheatnet IP logo. If you turn the knob, the third button down is input settings. And you can select your input source. Once again, by clicking the button, you can select analog, digital AES, or digital Wheatnet IP. Once those are set, you can set your analog gain and your digital gain. Pushing the knob in once you've highlighted the proper in gain control option will get you to the control that will let you turn up and down the level. You can either set the input gain using program audio or tone if that's what you prefer. The normal operating level should be minus 20 dBFS with peaks no higher than minus 12 dBFS at any given time. Now that our input levels are set, we're going to set our output levels. We're going to assume that you're going to use composite output, but we'll also show you how to set up the AES output. The composite output level is located on the FM55 menu with the Wheatnet IP logo, turn the knob, and go down to output push the rotary encoder in and you have the TX1 and TX2 level setups. So what you want to do under normal programming is turn the TX1 output level up so that you read proper modulation on your FM modulation monitor or on the front of your exciter. Remember we give you the weapons, we don't tell you how to use them. If you want to turn it up a little bit louder, that's your own prerogative. Also here is the pilot level which is set default to 9% and the digital level is the output of the AES if you're feeding AES out of the processor into the exciter. We also have our baseband 192 level. If you have an exciter that accepts the AES composite input, this is the level adjustment for that. So you have a few options here in the output menu to set your transmitter level, your pilot level, your AES output level, and if applicable, your baseband 192 level. The last thing we'll cover is choosing a preset. Once again, we're back to the Wheatnet IP screensaver on the front panel. We turn the encoder and we see presets as the second option. And there's a bunch of factory presets that come with every audio processor that we deliver. A lot of the factory presets are named for format and that's fine. But sometimes you want to ignore the name of the preset and just go down and try the preset. Sometimes urban medium might be good for country because you like a lot of warm bass or sometimes hot AC will be good for CHR in a market where quality is preferred over loudness. To choose your preset, just scroll until the preset is highlighted and then press the encoder in and that preset is selected. Finally, we're going to take a walk through the Pro GUI, which brings out all of the options and all the sound controls that are available on the FM55. The input screen shows your analog and digital input gains as well as a left-right balance control, which is right here and a high-pass filter. The controls that we used on the front of the FM55 to select analog or digital input are also available here. So you can choose to connect the GUI and ignore the front panel setup and just go right for the setup in the GUI if you wish. If you're at a transmitter site and you don't have a laptop or computer, you can then use the front panel for an easy setup. The FM55 comes with a parametric equalizer, two shelving bands, and two fully parametric equalizer bands. It comes with a five band leveler, five band compressor, and our smart IAGC system. The back end has a bass enhancer and a five band limiter. And then there are options for stereo generator. There are options for your analog left to right output, whether to be de-emphasized. There's options for your digital output, whether it's AES-3 or baseband 192, SCA input controls, there's a test oscillator in the back, as well as a composite processor. Your system controls, 
set your security for the front panel and for the audio processor and also give you status as to what the temperature of the unit is and your active inputs. We hope this tutorial has been informative and if you have any questions about your Wheatstone audio processor please feel free to give us a call at 252-638-7000 or email tech support at wheatstone.com. Thank you for watching.